Welcome in, everyone, to another episode of the Vintage Anime Club podcast, where we talk about old-school anime, see how they hold up, and if we still enjoy them or not. I am one of your hosts, Dennis, and I've been getting emails from Hot Topic about their newsletter talking about anime, because it's month of May and promoting a bunch of anime stuff, and I remember how... Hot Topic was one of the first places I ever found that had anime-related merchandise way back in the day. Those, like, silkscreen Dragon Ball The silkscreen Dragon shirts. Ball t-shirts are the exact ones <laughs> that I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, they were. They were one of the first places that had uh, Sailor Moon shirts mm-hmm. that I remember. To uh, one of my co-hosts, Kate. Hello. Hi. Have you purchased any of those Dragon Ball Z shirts or no. Sailor Moon shirts? No, I never did because I wasn't a Dragon Ball Z fan or a Sailor Moon fan. <laughs> did you Did you see those at conventions and stuff? I saw a lot of other people wearing them, yeah. Yeah. Did you have an anime club during college, high school, uh, and see people wear them there? No, uh, not in high school. In college, there was an anime club, but I don't really remember anyone wearing anything quite that loud. <laughs> uh, one of our other co-hosts, Diana. Yes, yes. Hello. From the floor. From the floor, working on cosplay like the boss you are. Uh, so, when I was in high school, I ran the anime club, because of course I did. <laughs> and... Um, I remember for a small amount of time, I actually sold that those awful Dragon Ball shirts in the anime store that I worked at through high school, mm-hmm. because of course I did. <laughs> and uh, and I definitely judged every person who bought those. And there were people who would come in and they would see those and they would be like, "Oh my god, these are the greatest shirts!" And I'm like, "This is unlicensed. No one, no Watsuki Sensei is not making money off this tension." <laughs> Shirts uh-huh. that you are buying, oh, man. and it was like around the same time that like Samurai yep. X was coming out too. So it was like a really hardcore picture of Kenshin that was like literally ripped from the cover of an eighty vision like cassette tape. Mm-hmm. And it was done. Mm-hmm. I want to oh, say God. with like all manner of ridiculous kanji. It was just like just had something like sky and empty, and I was like. <laughs> okay like or just you know like a particle of a kanji like something yep. that would turn it into something else but by itself meant nothing oh wow oh You're yeah. awful it, yeah it was it, it might have also been a case of like they there were some chinese characters that were actually from china that they were like no let's go for it what a great idea i'm sure there were a bunch of chinese oh, characters so and our last co-host here, Ed. Hello. Did you it's own me, or purchase any of those? I did Even not. for a friend? So no, hard. I did not. No, I, I, I can't see Ed any of going those. that path. I, I also saw people wear them around at conventions. <laughs> was it like super awkward town for you too? Did you like feel a little bit of the, the hint of shame for these people? Because I definitely... Third party shame, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, like, kind of. Secondhand sorta. embarrassment. Yeah, well, for me, it was like I would see so many people wearing them. I'm like, is, is this stylish? Am no. I just out of touch? No, no. no this was like, it was like the official <coughs> shirt. You, it's you it's like the the uniform for congors who don't cosplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you, you know, there's there's like the guy. There's the guy, and there's like a hundred of them, and you see them at almost every convention. It's the guy with the. Uh, the tackle, khaki tackle, or, um... Like vest? Vest. Fishing vest? The fishing vest. The khaki shorts. They're not, like, pants. They're they're khaki shorts with the pockets. Uh-huh. They're car- oh, cargo shorts, cargo right? Cargo shorts with the pockets. Mm-hmm. And then, like, a red shirt. <laughs> and a fanny pack. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, because the, the, the cool. pockets in the vest and the shorts weren't enough. You need no, the no, fanny no, pack. You need to, well, your money goes in front of your dick uh, uh-huh. and under your belly. And then you you put all your the animes you have bought into the other pockets. I suppose that's where your DVDs go now. Uh-huh. I, I don't sure. know. I well, see, these days, days like the figures internet. come in such huge boxes that yeah. wouldn't work out anymore. Yeah. Well, that's meant no. That's meant for the the blind boxes so he can trade <laughs> easily. Of this purchasing. particular man still exists. Uh huh. I've seen those DB, DBZ and amongst other types of shirts still around at conventions every day. But, but where do people buy them? Like I, don't I mean. Know. Yeah. Hot Topic doesn't sell them now. Taobao. I, I'm entirely sure that like some licensor just has a, a sub supplier from Asia. Uh-huh. So it's like they, they never stopped making them. They're just waiting for them to come back into style. 
Yeah. And they'll be like, we are ready. Well, there, there's, We've got this market there's covered. Who won't let it die. Like, obviously, there's like an out of touch person who just is like, I will, I will maintain this forever. <laughs> just like, oh man, I can't wait for my next waifu slash husband. Oh wow. It's like it's like you're literally wearing a daki makara. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you you're not just sleeping with your pillow wife or mm-hmm. pillow husband. You're actually like wearing it in in the daki makara style because I don't imagine that like like I don't take anybody in that shirt seriously. No, right? yeah. as you should not. Well, now I'm not. wondering like you can get those daki makara covers. Is someone just gonna like? put like a head hole and a couple armholes in it and then wear it like a nighty. <laughs> oh my god i have money on on people that we know doing that i know exactly who those people would oh be. boy i've never owned one of the shirts that had a anime character face on it with a die thing but i did own that type of shirt yeah i've, I've seen some colorful shirts they did not have goku on them no, though i had i had one of those colorful sh- colorful ah, colorful shirts it was like a sunset type thing because it was red then went to black there were some kanji on it i couldn't read yeah. and it was some temple at the bottom of the landscape oh yep. wow yep i i i will take all your shame <laughs> in the room right now that. taking all the shame that's oh, fine that's- I was Gross. young and stupid. I had a I had a two XL Goku shirt t shirt. Like what the fuck am it I doing wearing a two XL Goku shirt? Was like the only was it like gifted to you? Why would you get a two XL? It was the last one they had in the store. <laughs> and you were like, I must have a this I must shirt. own a Goku I do, shirt. I do definitely. I did definitely buy a shirt that was most most likely too small for me to have been wearing in public, but it had Nirasawa art on it, and I was like. Hell yeah, I'm gonna rep Nira Works. Yeah, it was a pink shirt. Uh huh. All of the like the screen print on it was purple. Ooh. Wow. And bright green. Oh, oh wow. Oh, it was real, real rough. On <laughs> like knowing that a high percentage of your wardrobe currently is black, mm-hmm. I can't imagine you wearing that. <laughs> yeah, I would wear a sweater. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was real, real intense. Hot, hot topic memories still going strong with well um, i feel like hot topic's gotten classier stuff, like oh, well so. i remember so. going to hot topic before anime was big in the u.s and it was all like you would go there for like band shirts mm-hmm. and whatnot they still have band shirts yeah they, they still do that but i've never heard of the bands now <laughs> i'm like i don't know who that is <laughs> i i mean that's why we're on the vintage anime podcast yeah to the hey youngins because the vintage stands for the people. <laughs> the vintage actually stands for us. Uh, I think, you know, come to think of it, I don't think I've ever bought an anime thing at Hot Topic. I, I did buy, like, shit kicker boots at mm-hmm. Hot Topic. I bought shoes that had a five-inch platform. Oh! I definitely wore with Courtney to... Uh, uh, I hope Courtney had like 12 inch shoes then. I don't even remember. I know, that, <laughs> I know that Courtney and I both, we went to Lollapalooza together. She uh-huh. was about, it was like literally the summer before she went to college. And she, because she was going to the other side of the country for college. And I was like, I got us tickets to Lollapalooza. We're going to see Incubus. And uh, we we're going to see Incubus. We we're going to see Jurassic 5. We we're going to see uh, A Perfect Circle. And oh, that's a good lineup. It was a, yeah, it was I was like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, I think that was like, um, what is it? Rooney played like that was like their first big thing. And, wow. Uh, Thirty Seconds to Mars or whatever mm-hmm. it was. That was yeah, like, yeah. Their first. It was like their first. Wow. Concert stuff, and mm-hmm. they were on like the tiny stage. Yeah. And uh, and a couple of other ones, and I just I remember we we got people to sign petitions, and our prize for getting them to sign these petitions was we got we got to go up on stage. Oh. Played, wow. And we were like touch distance from James Eha. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and I literally called a friend of mine who lived in New Zealand who I had become friends with on a tool like message board. Uh-huh. And I was like, guess where I am? And I called, like, the phone up. Oh, wow. And, and and so that was a very expensive phone call. Oh, uh, at the time. <laughs> that was like 2000 and two, money. Two, two, 2000 money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it was New Zealand dollars, right? But, yeah, <laughs> this is pretty pretty expensive. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that was my pur- my purchase at, at Hot Tar Hot Topic had been the yeah. kicker boots. And oh then man! We both got like fishnets, and then at the end of the weekend, we took the fishnets off, and we had the hash tap, the hash mark. Ah, <laughs> from, from sunburn. From sunburn. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, well, Courtney was just like a, a darker shade of pale. Uh huh. I, on the other hand, actually do tan when I go out in the sun, and I had brown legs. <laughs> they were brown legs with fishnets. <laughs> Except for a couple places that had holes. It was really interesting. Like, <laughs> shot. <laughs> like, with tan. Aww. It was, it was like the spray tan yeah. gun had a sputter. Yeah, you know, really bad sputter. Yeah, it was, it was good. That was, that was a really great summer, actually. Man, now hearing about this band stuff makes me want to rewatch Beck Mongolian Shop Squad. But that's not what we're here for today, no. 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 We're here for something special. We're here for something super special. My do you want to, do you want to get into an hour or go over any news or anything? Uh, well, so, uh, speaking of special... Some special things have been coming out of the woodwork regarding Anime Expo this year. Which is the main big convention that we're all going to attend. Well, it's yeah. it's the biggest anime convention in the U.S. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it just happens to be in Los Angeles. Um, Our home base. Yep. That's probably why it's the biggest anime <laughs> con in the U.S. Well, Otakon's pretty, pretty large, too. Otakon is huge. Otakon's yeah. pretty large now, and uh, Mason's been pretty big for a while. Mm-hmm. Akon's mm-hmm. dropping down. Oh, but, yeah. So Anime Expo actually hit a, a milestone this past year. Um, they they are projected to exceed 100,000 people this year. Um, they got pretty close to it last year. Yeah, yeah it was like 90-something. 90 90 something. They're, they're basically like, because they're going to exceed 100,000 people, or they, they project to exceed 100,000 people, their liabilities uh, change. So they... It seems like, from what I can, what I've gathered, and from the news sources and from the people that I know through AX who I've spoken to, because they've hit this milestone, they have to renegotiate their liability policies. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, what that has turned into is uh, a whole lot of new s- structure. Yeah. Well, new regulations. New, new regulations. New regulations. The guy who was running Anime Expo, who left, and, uh, you know, good riddance, um, he kind of left sort of randomly, and there's talk that he was actually, like, kicked out. Yeah, I have, I have the impression I got from the online buzz was that he left because he didn't agree with this policy, and he was overridden, so he's just like, okay, I'm, you know, clearly my decisions so, are not being well, considered. Not worth considering anyway. But, um, <laughs> well, even if he's a bad person, I sort of feel like I'm on his side no, I mean, with I, this topic. I percent agree that the... So it's very hard to be like, I don't agree with this this situation. Because what's mm. happening is Anime Expo is putting into place a uh, child protection initiative with a, um, with a focus on, like, finding safe spaces, but also background checks for not just exhibitors and artist alley, but also for guests, staff, and volunteers. But not attendees. But not attendees. Yeah. Because that's 100,000. Which is a yeah, lot but of people, it's but it's completely interesting because short-sighted. a lot of their complaints are about other attendees' behavior, not yeah. the yeah. guests. So, which is, you know, like, I have definitely heard stories of... Uh, uh, I mean, we all have staffed at some point or another for, like, AC Paradise or for Anime Just Expo volunteer. in Yeah, general. volunteering. Um, I've had more situations where someone has had a problem, like, where people have abused the guests of honor than I've heard of any attendee having an issue that hasn't been immediately dealt with by staff. So, and I mean, a lot of this is also very, like, understandable things. Like, well, yeah, don't abuse the children. Yeah. And mm-hmm. finding safe spaces for kids or for people in general, I that's something that you don't I don't feel like you really need to have a a you know, initiative for. It's mm-hmm. a given. Yeah. yeah, well they don't have to have a huge policy in place to establish safe spaces. They could just do it on their own. Yeah. But I think the way they're going about this is really weird in that they're springing all of these new regulations and requirements onto people who have already paid for their booth spaces and for their tickets right. and whatnot and basically said like you have to do this otherwise everything you've done is forfeit yeah so right. whatever contract they sign is apparently now voided yeah right you know and they, they so they can't get a refund for if they don't want to pay for all of their booth workers to have background checks which uh right now apparently i think it's today or tomorrow 
they're having a meeting, like a, a meeting of all It was guys. today. Yeah, did we get, have we gotten? The uh, I haven't heard any I word about it. I asked about it on, uh, and uh, I got a comment saying that nothing happened. So, but but I don't know the full details. Yeah. yeah. The more details will probably emerge online later. later yeah, it today, just seems like, tomorrow. you know, even if AX has good intentions with this new policy, the way they've implemented it is completely it's, asinine. Yeah. 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 No, 100%. It's it's ridiculous and it's incredibly invasive. Okay. And it's also really, really unbelievably rude to our foreign guests. Yeah, oh, and there's such a lack of information about like where do you go for these background checks? Like, what is yeah. the official policy? Like, if if you've already been checked for a different job, Will you that know, count? yeah, does that count? And who's no, paying they, for it? They, mm-hmm. and yeah, the who's paying for it is a really big one. Also, yeah, the part that upsets me the most about the whole thing is, I mean, we're supposed to. This seems very slapdash. Oh, yeah. yeah. I imagine that if they were like, hey, you know what, starting next year, we're going to be rolling out these new changes. Like, I feel like they knew their ticket sales before now. Like, oh, yeah. They probably start their postmortem for ticket sales pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, they announced what their attendance was like uh, a couple months after the convention. So yeah. and they've been growing at a, a you know, a, a traceable rate. So yeah. it's like, well, if you're growing 10% a year and you did 90,000 this year, what are you going to be doing next year? Yeah, exactly. So at this point, it just kind of seems really slapdash. And one of the things that I, I think is happening is the SPJA itself is moving in a, in a different direction. Mm-hmm. And they are, I think they're trying to like branch away from just Anime Expo as its brand, which I think is really stupid. You literally own the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... I think that they're they're trying to expand. I know that they're doing um, stuff with uh, Project Anime, which is like a a part of their like an umbrella part of SPJA. And what that company does is uh, it helps to foster other conventions within the community. So like you know helps them with supplies. I know that they have. Their sets and they're actually they they cannot rent out their sets because they can't make a profit on those photo sets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they will lend them to up and coming conventions for free, uh, provided that you can pick them up and bring them back to their storage facility. Maybe a safety deposit, like a returnable security deposit or something, in uh, case it gets damaged. At the end of it, they well, from what I gathered from looking into it, they just require that you pick it up. Oh, okay. Um, but I imagine that they want you to not. Ruined. yeah like, yeah but uh so i don't know it, it's very interesting to see what's going to develop and uh they should probably work on that real quick yeah, yeah. To see what's already developed i feel like fewer guests of honor have been announced at this point in time compared to previous years yep. and that yeah. part of that might be guests saying, oh yeah they, they haven't been able to negotiate a um yeah. a confirmed deal that they can announce or you know. guests feeling insulted being yeah. you know like hey we're we're asking you to come to our convention we think you're great oh by the way please prove you're not a child molester. yeah well and <laughs> i feel like what is this even going to do like if someone complains about being harassed or something like the person doing the harassing are have they been convicted of a crime before this right like i i feel like so much that goes on probably is coming from people who don't have some kind of record that would get them banned from working at a convention. Right. Yeah. Like it, on top of it, if you have the safe spaces, the people who need to be checked and verified first off are the people who run the convention, the people who are running these safe spaces. Because that's the part that I worry about is attendees. Like I feel like we have less of pro- less problems now, and it is invasive that we have to go through the security and the uh, like. We do this through the security checks to get in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. You know, it's nice because when we work and stuff, like they'll let they'll let your exhibitor badge through or your guest badge through or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you're just a regular attendee, you have to go through the line. So you already have this in place because it's the LACC and it's a large amount of people. But then to have this extra layer that you say is for the guests, but yet, like it's just a giant inconvenience. <laughs> yeah. I <don't> yeah. Know. <sighs> that being said, it's gonna be my twentieth year in anime expo, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I'm close to that. I am almost there. 16, I think, for me. 16. Hmm. So, yeah. I'm such a newbie to anime. It's going to be fun. <laughs> what number does this make for you, Ed? Like three? Third or fourth. Okay, wow. Well, considering that. Yeah. I would go to ASEN more. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, considering you haven't lived in Southern California for decades. Right. Like, I think that's still a respectable number. Very, Very much so. All Judgment. right. <laughs> Judging. All right, then. Now that we've compared our anime expo bona fides, <laughs> maybe we should get back to the topic. Again. Let's yeah. get to, back to something fun. Yeah, so, I hope you're going to start a new chapter here. So if people don't want to hear about there AX are no drama. Chapter, what are you? Whoa, what? No, there's no chapters in this podcast. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's all straight shot through. We are going to be break. talking about <laughs> Fatal Fury, the motion picture. Yeah, we are. Woo! So a little background on this. Um, the game series itself started in 91, and the first OVA happened in 1992. Um, the motion picture is technically the third part in this OVA series. That's okay. You don't really need to know much other than, wow, those main characters are super strong. Yeah. They also like to run around and transform into their battle clothing. <laughs> Which... I was like, magical so- girl Terry Bogart. <laughs> some of them happen to have their clothes underneath. Some of them happen to appear out of thin air. Yeah, well, it's like someone's wearing something that you can't really hide that outfit under, and then somehow that outfit was hiding under it. Yes. Through the yeah. magic of animation. Anime! <laughs> when you become it a martial arts sense. master, you can materialize. Yes, yeah, so you can summon your clothes. <laughs> your on onto yourself. Yeah. So before we get into the anime, did anyone ever play any of these games? I did. I, I played. played some. But to be quite honest, I actually started playing these games... Only after I watched Fatal Fury. Oh, Fatal I meant, Fury. I just meant <laughs> playing the games in general, just knowing the the mechanics for it. Because I only played, yeah, I played two. I think that's it. I only played Fatal Fury two and the Sega Genesis. So I played uh, the Garo Densets, mm-hmm. Densetsu, which is Fatal Fury, um, and it's really fucking hard. Yeah, and the characters are actually quite hard to use. And I played a lot of King of Fighters, but I played a lot of Capcom versus SNK and Card Fighters Clash, which takes a lot less skill I think, <laughs> than playing King of Fighters. CVS was a great game too. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but, S- yeah, uh, SNK is known for making very hard, broken. ridiculously broken <laughs> bosses as well. Yeah. So those are hard yeah, games. bosses. Yeah, I never got to anything that had like geese or. I never got there either. Yeah. I think it's a, I, in King of Fighters, I think I played like King of Fighters ninety six or ninety seven, and uh, whichever one had Yori. Okay. Well. And um, and then there was actually like a Gals Fighters, which was all the girls. Oh. And Gals Fighters was amazing because uh, it had Yori from King of Fighters in drag <laughs> as Miss X. Oh wow! We were definitely pulled, right? Yeah. They're still but making King of Fighters. They still are. Yeah. Fourteen. What is it? Fourteen is the next one. I've never so. played any of them. So, yeah, no, so I've never played Fatal Fury. Long, okay. a long history with this series. What? Which ones did you get to play, Ed? Uh, Besides Capcom vs. SNK two, I think we, except for K, we might have all at least tried that game out. Yeah, I mean, I dabbled with Fatal Fury, but it wasn't really until <laughs> King of Fighters that. You know, I played more than a little bit. Nice. And got, I mean, I knew the ca- all of the characters, but... Yeah. These well, are, there's also, There's like, so many characters in King of Fighters. So. I mean, SNK also had, like, Samurai Spirit. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, which is, was very funny to me, because there's a bunch of, in, in Fatal Fury, the motion picture, they actually have, like, a bunch of, of funny little throwaways here and there. And one of the ones they have is, like, they're in a club. And Andy turns to the side and sees Nakorudu from Samurai <laughs> so Spirit. Sure, yeah. And I'm like, that's Nakorudu. <laughs> Who takes the, like... Yeah, Samurai Showdown is, like, a period piece. It's not modern. And this is definitely a modern club <laughs> owned by the Duck King. The best King of Fighters character. Nakorudu is the one with the Falcon, right? Yeah. Yeah, I played her in CVS too. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, so going back to... So this amazing... <laughs> Back to the motion picture. Yes. This, this is much like much like Ninja Scroll and Ghost in the Shell and Macross Plus. Uh, King like fail through the motion picture for me. Like I've watched the the OVAs. I watched both of the OVAs probably twice. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe twice. Um, I have probably watched Fail Fury the motion picture on VHS dubbed a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> Probably almost as much as I've watched Ninja Scroll. 
Wow. Nice. Like, I can quote that dub. <laughs> but you've never watched it subbed before? I've watched it subbed, but I like the dub better because uh-huh. I think that the interactions between the characters, like, I don't care for the woman who plays Mai's voice at all whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and Laucorn is fucking garbage. <laughs> He's a trash boy. Oh, my God. But... I mean, I went through most of high school and most of junior high saying Terry Bogart. <laughs> oh, wow. Little friends of mine. Yeah, he's got like a real like surfer accent going on. I, Laucorn, have become a god. <laughs> and he says it like, stacks it up. And it's in such a great comparison to Shinichiro Miki, who's like Alan Shazar. <laughs> and uh, like the cool suave guy. And like... It's really different and <laughs> awkward. And, like, the the way that some of the other characters talk, you're just kind of like, wow, that really doesn't translate at all whatsoever. Also, Akane. <laughs> That's... It was just... It was funny to me to watch it because it was, like, watching, like, oh, it's the girl from, from uh, Ranma being not Akane. <laughs> and a whole bunch of other bros like broing out and being like, "Hey, did you have sex with that one? I think you're gonna." It's like everybody is everybody is banging except Joe. <laughs> Anybody notice that? Like Joe's always like, yep. "Hey, you have sex with my? Hey, you fuck Zulia?" <laughs> like, yeah. Anyhow. I'm guessing listeners can just figure out uh, who chose this one for us to watch. You're all <laughs> welcome. Yes. Mm. Actually, there was a lot of... Uh, I got quite a bit more responses when I posted this for our throwback Thursday. Like, oh, that's what we're going to talk about next. That's because I shared it, and 90% of the people on my feed that I went to any kind of high school or middle school <laughs> or college with all threw a hat up into yeah. the air and yeah. exclaimed, do you feel the storm? It's coming. <laughs> like... Yeah. I got a lot of like, oh, I remember watching this. It was so good. I got a lot of that well, on Twitter and Facebook. From that initial like moment in the beginning where Terry <laughs> has like the shittiest animation ever. <laughs> like it's actually a pretty decent movie. Like the does hold up. is funny mm-hmm. because it's just it's like late nineties it's late nineties biz dub. Yes. So it was outsourced to Canada. Everybody in it is Canadian. Like, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And it was written by Trish Ledeau, who is simultaneously, like, the best and, and worst uh, script adapter that I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> she she did a lot of adaptations for Rumiko Takahashi stuff out here. Um, and if it was, basically, if it was a pretty high-rated, like, AAA title, she was doing the adaptation. Oh, okay. And she wrote, uh, she actually wrote a really comprehensive book on anime back in, back in, like... I want to say 96 or so, 94, 95, 96 ish. Okay. And I, I own it, and I actually used it as a reference material when I was doing a big report for it. And, we might have uh, to break that out sometime. Oh. <laughs> like, Once yeah, we... you'll get to see all of like middle school Diana's like anim, animu <laughs> retrospective notes. Maybe when uh we get the website for the podcast set up, cool. we can <laughs> we can go comprehensive article you know, on that later. You can know, look through my archive <laughs> of anime garbage. All right, yeah. so are we ready to get into spoilers for Fatal Fury, the motion picture? How, how have you not spoiled it already? <laughs> I feel like we're already there. We are, but let's, let's at least get the intro music set in. All right, here we go. Like the, the four that are reoccurring the most are Terry, Andy, brothers, Mai, who's Andy, the younger brother's girlfriend, and their friend Joe Higashi. Mm-hmm. And Joe is like a kickboxer, and, or like just a boxer, kind of. Uh, yeah, I, well, I want to say kick, he's, 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 he's Muay Thai. Yeah, yeah Muay Thai. Yeah. And uh, 
Mai's a ninja. And Mai. Andy and Mai. Andy is also a ninja. Okay. What? Blonde American ninja. Yes. Is how he's. Oh, he's, see, I wonder, like, ninja. what what are their jobs? Like, Joe's the only one we see actually working because he, like, wins prize money. Adventure. Their uh-huh. jobs are traveling the world and being yeah. fighting tournaments. So okay. Basically, imagine, like, two Kens. It's like double dragon <laughs> Ken. Like, they had. I guess they have like dead parents and a lot of money. And uh-huh. Andy is more of a grappler. I'm mean, sorry, Terry's more of a of a grappler. Uh-huh. Like a street fight. Well, yeah. yeah. Street fight. <laughs> no, wait, street hold on. <laughs> and, and Andy is a lot more refined. He's more of a ninja. So uh so he they basically are uh, in Japan for one of um Joe's fights. And uh I guess Terry just kind of bucks off all the time. <laughs> and decides, he wanders. I'm, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm going to do a thing with myself. And also, I'm sad because ev- literally every girl that he tries to mack on dies. Terry's a black widow. There he is. He's like a male black widow. <laughs> and is there a male black widow? He's like, I'm not allowed I mean, to love anybody cult. because everybody dies. Boo, boo, boo. Mm-hmm. And of course, because his uh, compatriots are afraid of him. They are like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and they kind of go with it. And uh, so they're all kind of getting together to see um, to see Joe's fight. Or they're supposed to get together to see Joe's fight. Yeah. But Terry, because he's a piece of shit, is like, man, I'm just going to go to the game center and fuck off and not actually <laughs> go to the fight. I'm going to fight poorly at this SNK <laughs> arcade. While, while, while that's all going on, there's also this excavation happening at the start too yeah Yeah, that was the very start it starts with a like the movie starts with a a dig site where not unlike indiana jones yeah yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, actually i feel like this movie references a lot of other movies it does it has a lot of MacGuffins. yeah it feels like it feels like those would be MacGuffins. it reminds me a lot of uh the mummy (laughs) in in some in some Uh Cause yeah, and, and they actually do a lot of traveling around, and they go all yeah. It's a, it is really like world traveling, like kind of cosmopolitan in a way that I wouldn't expect from an anime movie. Yeah, like they're going to all of these different famous places around the world, like in Europe and Asia. And they're also following like Alexander the Great and Genghis mm-hmm. Khan, mm-hmm. and all of these different. They're basically like citing all these people that may have, you know, bumped into each other, or at least like have may have looted each other yeah yeah there's even like the crusaders mentioned yeah. and stuff too yeah all of this stuff like it's it's a much deeper backstory than i would have expected i thought Especially, they would just be like oh we're this is from some conqueror sure you know and we'll just like leave the rest up to your imagination with the source material like yeah. not really having a coherent story it's a fighting game so well, there's yeah to but point out that yeah. this is this completely separate point po- po- plot from the the games and there's yes. all these characters yeah, so they just took the, the characters games. from the game and then put them and into this different them, scenario right, their original yeah. story for this for this yeah movie. like the villain who we get introduced is a uh, laucorn and his cronies they don't have any They're sort of appearance in the game in the game yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they are 100 percent original characters for this mm-hmm. i don't even think that they've been like omakes in the game <laughs> <laughs> like and uh and they're they're pretty like, I know we, when we were watching it, Kate, you were saying that you thought that they were pretty well developed. Yeah, well, it was much more development than I'm used to expecting, especially from retro anime. And especially from cronies. So, yeah, yeah, like, uh, the um, henchmen actually have a discussion about, like, if they think their boss is on the right track or not. And I was like, this is much deeper than yeah. I've come to expect from anime writing. Yeah. Where it's all like, we must follow leaders' orders Yeah, or yeah, like, there's... Usually, stock footage ninjas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, stock footage ninjas and like just blind obedience. Like I, you know, I don't care if this guy's right or wrong. Like I said, well, I would follow him, so I, I will follow him to the death. There are some stock footage ninjas in this. There yeah, are, like ninja zombies. There are. There are. Ninja zombies. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna say that the whole thing is just like a masterpiece of writing and <laughs> much deeper than any other anime thing. But it was actually surprisingly better than I expected. Yeah, yeah. Well, Especially for something that like came from a a fighting game. Like <laughs> it really, it could have been so much worse. It works. Well, is the strength of it to to not base it too much on the source material mm-hmm. yeah because yeah. Like other video game adaptation anime you know they tend to be 
awful more well yeah if it's if it's following the story of a fighting game that means that the story of the fighting game is probably not really that well thought out because it's just kind of an excuse to have these characters they designed fight each other yes hey here's these so might as well like get an actual (laughs) movie writer to write this script for a movie they probably did get an actual movie writer to write the script i know that obari did a lot of the directing and everything but he's also pretty good at taking stuff that may not (laughs) how dare you (laughs) He just pushed my adorable baby puppy. The, the, you're Who snoring, snoring, adorable baby puppy. Yeah, but he doesn't understand. He doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about King of Fighters except that mommy loves it. <laughs> oh, it's okay, baby. Um, but Obari has a really good sense of directing. Like he can make pretty much anything interesting that I've seen, except for porn. That's really gross. <laughs> porn is gross. But, you know, he's he's actually very dynamic as a director, which is like when you watch the, the English trailer, it's like a, a, a crazy awesome d- director, action director, Masami Obari. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he is. So... There were lots of really great action scenes, except for the first oh, one in the arcade, in the yeah. arcade that we just mentioned. Oh, that's really Ooh. Wow. Do you have to draw this out or something? I mean, literally, like, draw it on a napkin and film it? <laughs> it looked like something that I could draw, because I can't Well, draw. it was probably, like, they gave it to, like, the junior animators as, like, a, hey, guys, cut your teeth on hey, this. Hey, do you want to intern for our studio? <laughs> Come draw Terry Bogard. Hey, do you like King of Fighters? They found some dudes at the arcade. They were like, hey, SNK arcade people, do you want to come hang out in our animation studio? <laughs> do you draw fan art of King of Fighters no, characters? No, for King of Fighters is way better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, that wouldn't surprise me, actually. Yeah, it was pretty lumpy. It was... Ugh. He did not move Zvelti at all. But oh, we got no. to a better fight, much, well... I don't know if I call it better, but it was much better animated (laughs) afterwards. I I love Kim. I love Kim Kapwan. I think he's a very cool, very interesting character. He does Taekwondo. He's who I picked when I played the game because... Yeah, he's really hard to use, too, because he's 90% kicks. It was terrible. I lost every match that I fought with him, but I didn't care. I was like, he does Taekwondo, I do Taekwondo, wee! Yeah, Yeah, that sounds about right. (laughs) I I literally, like I said, I I played King of Fighters and... Uh, and Garo Dan Setsu because I watched this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, that's totally my jam. I love that movie. My shit is the best. She is hard as shit to play. Also, also she does not jiggle nearly as much. In the game or in the movie? In the, in the game. Oh. No, well, you know. She's gotten a lot jigglier now because the... It depends. Because the, the technology, the, the technology has improved. <laughs> yeah, I thought the movie was interesting in that her boobs jiggle separately. Like, yeah, alternately. Characteristics. Do you yeah, think? She's got the guy next bounce. Do you think they uh, use that as inspiration for all the dead or alive women's? Uh, well, Mai is definitely a prototype for that kind of <laughs> character, but she's not the only one. No, yeah. she's not. No. It could have been, uh, let's say, sixty-five percent inspiration that way. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, before we continue, how about we go into? Who these people are played by. All right. So you have Terry, who's voiced by Kazuki Nishikori in Japanese. He hasn't really done a lot more, though he did sing that super sweet ending credit song. <laughs> the movie. So good. Um, he's played in English by Mark Hildreth, who is Hiro Yui in G- Gundam Wing. And he's also Vega in Street Fighter V as well. So he gets yeah. he gets to stay wow. in fighting yeah, games. No, 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 the TV series, not, not five, oh, okay. not five. <laughs> okay. okay, gotcha. Yeah, the Street Fighter TV anime series. Uh, Andy's played by Keiichi Nanba, who actually is the real game voice for Andy in all of the Fatal Fury and King of Fighter games. He's also Zoisite in Sailor Moon. Yep. What? Yep. yep. Nanba oh, Keiichi. wow. Yep. Wow. <laughs> yep. Zoisite, the... the... Very effeminate one. Yes, <laughs> yes, oh, that man. exact one. Yeah. And then he you is. Any he's Pisces and Poseidon in Saint Seiya. I don't know if they're. I don't know too much of Saint Seiya, so not too sure. Mai's played by. Oh, I'm sorry. His English voice is Peter Wilde, who hasn't done much. Uh, he's various voices in Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century. 
Dingo and Sonic Underground, but not really many other anime titles. But he was, he, I thought he did a really good job as Andy. Yeah. Like, he's actually, besides uh, one of the later voices because of other series of nostalgia's sake, he's actually one of my favorite voices in this dub. Some of the delivery, I feel like, and like like I said, Trisha Doe does a very good job of adapting stuff for mm-hmm. uh, English-speaking audiences to make it more interesting and to sort of get capture the the mood. Of hey, I saw your sister naked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, random passerby, for that. Yeah, that, yeah, that was really unexpected, and it's not in the Japanese. I imagine that it was also like a joke on the fact that like you do have the two siblings, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's I I really feel like this was one of those movies where like the English adaptation, even if the voice acting was not like the end all be all, you know, of mm-hmm. great voice acting, it still had a strong uh, a strong script. Yeah, it was very strong. So um, yeah, hats off to Lido for that. <laughs> My Shiranui is played by Kotono Meet. Ah, uh, can't meet Suishi. Sorry, <laughs> it's like bleh. Sailor, Sailor Moon. Moon. Sailor Moon. Yep. Misato Kusanagi. Boa Hancock in One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's also to keep with fighting game stuff. She's the voice of Christy in the Dead or Alive series as well. Yes, she is. Um, she's played in English by Lisa Ann Bailey, who is Chi Chi in the Ocean Dub for Dragon Ball. Lady Kyra in Ronin Warriors. Relina Peacecraft in Gundam Wing. Yeah. And she's also uh, Murray. Ramius and Gundam Seed. I don't know. I butchered that name. And funny enough, she also plays another fighting game character in anime. She's Kami in Street Fighter V, or Street Fighter 2 V, the anime series. Surprisingly, she is also Kami in the Terabad Street Fighter animated series that aired on USA. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you remember watching. I, I watched that a lot, and they are, they are not drawn all that great. Mm-mm. Oh, boy. Well, I mean, but nothing, nothing quite beats that Darkstalker. <laughs> oh, man. Crazy. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. Joe's played by Nobuyuki Hiyama. Yeah. I almost said Hiyama. Like, nope, Hiyama. Who, I don't know, he's, he's, he's also Joe in the Fatal Fury and King of Fighters games, and he's some guy in these Legend of Zelda games, I guess. He's also Siegfried. <laughs> yeah. He's the guy who yells in he's, all yeah. of his roles. <laughs> he's, he's Link. Uh, he is ha! Uzu Sanagiyama yeah. in Kill a Kill, Viril in Gurren Lagann, Hiei in Yu Yu Hakusho, and so many more wow, yeah. things. He's, he's always the hot-blooded he's young guy. He's Nightmare and Siegfried, right? Oh, yeah. he's, he's, not, he's not Nightmare, he's just Siegfried. So well, he does... Well, Nightmare oh. and Siegfried it depends which game. Yeah, Some I think games they I th- use Siegfried's voice and distort it, and other games yeah. just make him a different guy. Yeah, I think he's he's Siegfried in Three Up. So he well yeah he so he's Nightmare in Three Up, I believe. Okay. Um, I remember seeing the link in Link for uh, Soul Calibur Two. Yeah. And Nightmare. Oh, like maybe he is in the two same then. Voice actor. Okay, so he is in two and up. There you go. Joe Higashi is played by Jason Gray Stanford in English, who is rat we. You might recognize that game, that name, folks, because he's Ron in Green Legend Ron. Yeah. Yeah. Kento in Ronin Warriors, Raditz and Kui in the DBZ Ocean Dub, and he's also Sherlock Holmes in Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd Century. Yeah, and that Holmes in the 22nd move Century. The crowds are used to put me in the <laughs> Wow. I love this movie so much. Memorize all it's an of unreasonable it. love. I know that there's no reason for me to like it this much. You are not the only one who loves it. it. There are a lot know, of people who love it. It's gorgeous, too. Like, it's actually, like, with the exception of those couple of really bad frames, like... Mm-hmm. It was just ab- two fights. Yeah. It was only two fights. Absolutely, like, gorgeous. Well, because Obari does great work. Even when the show's not that awesome, like, the animation <laughs> quality is usually quite high. Laucorn is played by Shinichiro Miki, who Diana mm-hmm. mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. What do you have him in? Uh, funny Everything. enough... Yeah, yeah, he's in a lot of things. He's in he, Generator Gall. He's in he's Al and Shazar in uh, Vision of Scapone. And and Escapone in the garbage pile movie. <laughs> he's Roy Mustang in Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, to stay with um, fighting game stuff, he's Akira Yuki in Virtua Fighter and Sagat in Street Fighter Alpha, along with Capcom vs. SNK. Oh. He's also apparently he. Assassin. It is hit. Yeah, he's assassin in Fate Stay Night, and they apparently use his rendition of Charizard and Staryu in the Pokemon US <laughs> dub. That's great. Funny that's, enough. That's great. Because of course he does that. <laughs> He's played by Matt Hill. Did he also play uh, 
the Japanese voice of James. Which maybe? James? Like po- from uh, from Team Rocket. Uh, Team Rocket. Poke- maybe. He- Pokemans? He could yeah. be in Pokemans. He could be. He's the, he's, uh... I closed that tab already, so I can't, <laughs> I can't sure get there. I'm pretty sure that's him. We can look it up later. Yeah. Um, he's play Laucorn is played by Matt Hill, who also plays the dub voice of Duck King. Um, uh, Matt Hill, who I am super happy about because he is Ryo of the Wildfire and Ronin Warriors. Oh boy! God. He's uh, also Karo in Card Captor Sakura, Kira <laughs> Yamato in Gundam Seed, Ed Single D Ed in Ed Ed and Eddie, and he is the voice for Raphael in the Terabad Turtles Three movie. The one where they go back to feudal Japan. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, that just got brought out. Um, God. Intense. And Sulia is played by Tomo Sakurai in Japanese. She's Shayla Shayla in El Hazard, Aww. Hinoa in Gintama, and Misao in Kenshin. Oh, she's also a uh, Mylene Flair Genius in Macross 7. Mylene Genius. 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 Yeah. And her English voice is Miriam Sura. Sura? Akane in Ron My Half, and that's pretty much all that she's known for besides this film. Hmm. They were like, we can't unhear Akane screaming. No, but at least she's not angry at anybody. Oh, in this. No. <laughs> well, she does have a moment where she's like, what do I know? I'm just a kid. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Bussy bridges. Oh. Uh, what, we, what do we leave off on? Kim getting beat the fuck up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we, let's skip but he has. A bit. Oh, go ahead. Well, Sulia meeting. Yeah, Sulia meets Terry, Terry in the arcade. In the arcade yeah, Kim magically transforms into his into his. Uh, yeah, he's outfit. like wearing a garden party suit and then has his like he fighting kind of, outfit on underneath. He kind of uses his key Dragon Ball style, like yeah. like all of a sudden his you know the air around him starts flaring up <laughs> and then his clothes rip and tatter. But instead of ex- instead of exposing the bare chest. He just, he just goes straight into, into a proper gi. Into oh, he a proper gi. Straight. He has, like, another layer of clothes underneath that one, which yeah. then tears off into <laughs> the yeah. right. He also... Okay. He's he, not the only one who has this, no. this problem. No. Like, uh-huh. There are me- there are multiple other people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is this a problem? I I, <laughs> we want... We all, as cosplayers... I, I would love here, this power. We'd love that superpower. <laughs> Imagine you just, like, will into cosplay! Yeah, yeah but do you, you tear what's on top? Whatever you're wearing on top. That's when you just yeah, you just buy gorgeous. like you think of the practical implications. <laughs> you buy those five for. So you're just gonna dress like a hobo until the time no, comes to change into cosplay. No, you buy those five for ten dollar or ten for five dollar <laughs> t-shirts over in downtown LA. Sounds incredibly impractical. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna look like a hobo. Well, you know, you'll just look like Terry Bogart. That just makes it all the <laughs> more impressive when you change into a costume. Now, can you use your key to change back into plain clothes? After? I think this is a question for Luffy. <laughs> like, could you imagine, like, how how baller your hockey suit would look if you did that? Like, in that sense? No, sorry. That would be pretty long. awesome. Um, yeah, so basically, Sulia is, this, is the twin sister of... Of Loud horn. Fussy surfer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's searching out Terry Bogart, who she totally met in the arcade and was like, peace, I'm out, running away from these ninjas. And he was like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> well, it's and not like she knows what he looks you know, like. But she didn't bother to like wait and find out. She's like, I'm in a hurry, I gotta go. And uh, Yeah, she's got that Joe Higashi party to crash. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Which is exactly what she does. Joe Higashi wins his fight, because of course he does. Yeah, and then they have like a, a lawn party yeah. in a park in Tokyo. Yeah, Osaka. Mm-hmm. Oh, Osaka, Osaka. That's right. It's a hotel, a uh, hotel roof party. Osaka's oh. Like grand hotel or something. Mm hmm. And because uh, they, they definitely actually have the. Um, they pull out uh, after one of the scenes, and you can see the. Yes. You, you see, see the, the hotel, hotel sign. Name. Yeah. It's really funny. Uh, so they have that, all that going on, and then the party gets attacked, and she's looking for Terry, who who shows up eating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I imagine after being a vagabond in the middle of God only knows where, like, he'd probably show up to everything hungry. <laughs> and so he's eating, and, and they're like, oh no, a dude showed up with a face mask. And then Kim's like, I should probably show you guys that I know what to do, because I'm a really intense cameo, and they're paying my voice actor. And, Look upon me, children. Yeah, oh yeah, his whole family's there. <laughs> and they all watch him get his ass handed to him. Like, for a good 
chunk of this fight, he's just getting wailed on. Legit, I thought, oh, they're just gonna kill him. Yeah. Oh, he's he's dead. There's that's that bloody wall streak after you get smashed oh, into a wall. God. That's yeah. that's usually the death sign. Nope, he's yeah. still up and kicking. He manages, Literally. He manages to pull it together and does like a whole bunch of of taekwondo dues <laughs> and and uh, and snaps himself from the jaws of defeat. And then basically, Terry and Mai and Joe and Andy hook up with Sulia, who then is like, "Please help me find some stuff because my brother's going crazy." And they're like, yeah, "We've got the... nothing better to do. Let's do it." Yeah. Armor Girl. pieces of Mars, right? It's the armor. Of the Mars. armor of Mars. Yeah. God, the Godimus armor. Godimus armor. Yes. Yeah. And now we go on a globe trekking adventure. Yeah, find all the much, pieces. It, yeah, it really is globe trotting. Before is, the bad yeah. guys find them. Yeah. Yeah. Which I must say, like, our team are really fucking bad at this game. Yes. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they are. They do not manage to find a single fucking piece of armor. That no. Did not one get taken from them. At or, the, like, the bad guys were there, like, the week before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the bad guys are almost always there earlier or just about there. Or, you know, some shit's going down and they're not they're not doing it right. Nope. They're they're real bad. Like you know, they need Nathan Drake <laughs> <laughs> or Indiana Jones like they or Lara Croft. Or Lara well, see, Croft. this is what they get for being fighting game characters instead of <laughs> like of archaeologists. Yeah, right? adventure game characters. I mean, look how long it took them to figure out stuff in that library scene. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah, they're still doing better than like than like the the team in One Piece because <laughs> they've been looking for the One Piece for about. 10 years now. <laughs> They're nowhere near that fucking thing. They're over halfway. So is everybody else in the world. <laughs> hey, everybody else in the world has been looking for the mm-hmm. piece too. Yeah, that's true. So they're, they're no worse than anyone else yeah. is at that. Hey, Gold yeah. Roger hid that 22 years, 24 years ago in, in, in manga timeline. No one's found it yet. <laughs> they beat their world average. That's, all that, that's yeah. important. Mm, Lord. But yeah, so they're, they're basically, they go around trying to find... Uh, this chick's and we, family's armor. We get some amazing costume designs. Can we talk about the Terabad um, beach bathing suit attire oh, that yeah, our, yeah. the entire team oh, has? Man. So one of the things that I personally uh, thank Wasami Obari for is designing clothes that no human would <laughs> like, I mean, at one point, he puts Joe Higashi in, like, a Speedo Oh yeah, like Speedo that outfit that they wear, like Speedo. exploring that cave. Was it yeah. a t-shirt hoodie? Yeah, it, yeah. He had a t-shirt, hoodie. like a cropped t-shirt hoodie, <laughs> and Sulia is kind of echoing that with like this weird um, sailor thing. top hoodie. Yeah, and then Andy's wearing oh god, like a boat cut shirt. <laughs> you no, see... no, it's not even boat cut. It's off of both shoulders. Yeah, yeah. It's like really low. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like a gypsy top. Yeah. Oh god. I don't know how. Is it? Is it his? bulging pectorals that keep it up because uh, I have no yeah. idea how that thing it must stays be. up. His affinity for uh, Stevie Nicks. <laughs> <laughs> it, was pretty, it was pretty intense. The yeah, collective... The on this are just like, what? Why? The collective willpower of making sure Mai doesn't just fondle his exposed well, pectorals. Well, not even lie. Like, Mai was literally wearing a bandana. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She wore... She's, like, she's wearing butt floss and a bandana. <laughs> that magically somehow stays on her, like, mm-hmm. out-of-control level D tits. Also, so it dips in. It it yeah. caves into the the breast gap. It so it's how. like a bandana with an underwire, with what, an overwire built into it. Yeah. It's Either a wired it bandana. Tape or, yeah, it has boning structure to make sure that it stays there. I don't know. It's Clothes. Good. How do they work? Uh, I know how they work. They don't work like that. <laughs> Oh, the those outfits were had to have been some of my favorite ones. Um, until we get to other places, um, basically everyone's just globe trotting. We get lots of cameos from things. Uh, our team gets their asses handed to them multiple points in oh, time. Fine. Any any specific either venues you guys want to talk about or fight scenarios so, you'd like? To, we can go over all of them, sure. But yeah, there's quite a few. There are. They go and hang out. Uh, at the Duck King's bar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that scene. That's which, a great scene. Which is extra hilarious to me because the the English dub on that one is so well done. Because it's just basically, it's all my making everything extra awkward for Andy <laughs> all of the time. Andy is, unfortunately, the the big prude of the group, I guess. 
Yeah. Maya wants that Andy. Be less prude at the end, at least. So one of the one of the things is like there's some there's some guy that works for Laucorn. I don't even know if this guy does. This guy even have a name? He probably does. I close the tabs, but. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's a dude in a mask. That's J- and wait, no, Jamin's one Jamin's of them. No, no, no not Jamin. Jamin. <laughs> Yeah. Mas- hey. Mask guy is like Mas- poor man, poor man, uh, Zex. <laughs> he, he reminds me of the guy from Ranma, the mo- the, Ra- the second Ranma movie, who's like, got, he's like super serious and he fights with Moose and at one point they knock off his mask and he actually looks like a monkey, <laughs> like a bird, <laughs> he's like a bird face. Oh, it's been forever since I've seen that movie. Oh I need God. to revisit and, and Shampoo and Moose cannot stop laughing. <laughs> And they're like, no, we have to call through the fight. Like, he reminds me of that, except that he's like really hot underneath, but he also wears like nail polish and, and lipstick, and like lipstick. matching nail polish and lipstick. Oh, yeah. They coordinate. He's real pretty. Maya was very attracted to him in the club. No, she was. Well, pretty. she said like, ooh, a hottie, but I already got my Andy, so yeah. sorry. Well, and she knows what side the bread's buttered on. So, <laughs> so like, yeah. It's, Shouldn't laugh it's while really, drinking wine. It's really bizarre. Like, these, it feels like. They got all these really great character designs for, like, shit that you just throw away. <laughs> and that guy gets his gets the shit kicked out of him, though. Which is also very satisfying, because he was kind of a, a dick lord. It happens later, not in the, not in the club scene, but we get yeah. to meet a couple of other um, cameos and fan favorites. Besides Duck King, there's, there's Billy Kane. Billy Kane. Billy Kane hey, with Billy. an actual cane in there, and yeah. apparently I don't recall Australian which... accent or something. I don't. Re- hey. well, he's British. He's British. supposed oh, to be British. British. Yeah. Oh. I don't recall I which OVA get that. it is, but he and Andy have past beef. Yeah, it was. This, I think it was the one, whichever one Lily died in. I think it's like two. Okay. The second one. It looks like they're going to reignite that beef, but uh, that's when we get Mask Face Dude, who. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm so stuck up, and you made my pretty lady stop dancing. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to kiss you. What is the what is the thing that Mai does on stage? Is it just a song or is it a Dead dance? <laughs> yeah, she. Yeah. That that is like she, she second dances. or third magical transformation for Mai. Maybe second. Well, she doesn't have a magical transformation for that one. She she literally just like walks off and then ends up on stage. <laughs> I thought uh, she changed the tire. No, she she because she does the parasol thing, and that, yeah. which is a reference to what she does in the game. Yeah, yeah, and it's her theme music. That okay. They're playing. Uh. Good to know, because I would not have known. Yeah. <laughs> Neither would I unless I tried to play that game successfully. Uh, any other venues, Kate? Do you have a venue pre-final uh, battle? Almost said final fight, which is a different game reference. <laughs> trying not. I'm sorry for already mentioning Street Fighter. I'm trying not to mention other game references in this thing. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah. Damn you, Ed. Some sexist rule about women in the temple keeps me waiting out here for two hours. Yeah, the temple scene was interesting. Mm-hmm. That was at least for a good three minutes. Andy actually had a piece of the armor. Yeah. Huh. So yeah. the only person yeah. who was able to get something uh-huh. of this quest. Yeah, I think we. I mean, I know that uh, creepy mask dude definitely un unhitched a lot of Mai's clothes. But um. <laughs> but before that, you do she see also that a, her she, magical transformation. Yeah, mm-hmm. she she actually does more in that scene than she does in most of the other scenes from from the fighting perspective. Yeah. yeah. She kicks the shit out of that one chick. <laughs> well, I thought it was weird how in that one fight, like she's fighting off the guy and then she loses, and then like she doesn't bother to try fighting him after she loses. She's just kind of like, oh, he's holding me hostage. No, don't listen to him, Andy. Like, really, you just fought this guy. You're not going to try to like kick him in the shins? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel That's like there's, there's definitely like a lot lacking sometimes when it comes to that sort of thing with a lot of anime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and particularly with this this era of anime, sometimes like you just you get a naked woman is a plot device. Yeah. yeah, you know. And while I I definitely feel like going back to Maki, I feel like Maki has resilience to a point. Um, I think that I think that Mai is just so intended as like tits and ass begin with anyway like they also make her comedy mm-hmm. so it's not they're not going to give her something 
really poignant. Yeah. They, yeah. They don't. Yeah, her, her little bit of romance with Andy, which is, is fine. But she's mostly there to joke with Joe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she's mostly there to make it not a sausage fest. That too. At yeah. least there is. Like, she's the beard. <laughs> <laughs> Like really, like two brothers and their their buddy go like trekking across the world. Yeah. 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 Like she needs to go along just so that is you know. She can make sure that he doesn't come back gay. Is this Final <laughs> fourteen? What is this? I think oh. one of my favorite scenes is um, with the other team group with Terry, Joe, and Sulia. When we get to see more of Sulia's background and her weird Tenchi Muyo inspired haircut of Hayeka. <laughs> Um, it was a scene where they're at the dinner table, and I think, what was it, Terry goes, or Joe asks Terry about, like, why don't you become a professional fighter, you can get a lot of money, and then Terry says, money can buy you a lot of things, Joe, but it can't buy you happiness, or it can't buy you love, and I think Joe says, yeah, it can buy you something close to love, though. No, he's like, it may not buy you love, but you'd be surprised what it can rent. Oh, okay. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> And then he becomes flustered, realizing that he's with Sully. He's like, hey, what did you make me say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this dub was so good. Because <laughs> it wasn't like that in the... Looked at, we listened to it uh, subbed as well. Yeah. Um, and Joe well, instead nice. Joe instead says, well, while it can't buy me love, I do have a lot of groupies that follow me around. But hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, that so, doesn't make nearly as much of an impression. No. <laughs> So good job, good job, translators. <laughs> good job, translators and adapters. Uh, all a go. Yep. Find out uh, if you didn't see, like me, any of the other Fatal Fury OVAs, and you get to know a little bit more of why why Terry is a sad wolf, a uh, sad lone wolf. <laughs> yeah, we get a we get a random, um, very very random uh, cameo from Lily. Oh, no, from Geese Howard. Oh, from Geese, yeah. Who who killed his his girlfriend. Terry has no luck with women. I like that girl. Oh no, she's dead. Is is Lily in the games? I don't, I don't think so. she is. Alright. So. I don't think uh, anything any of the like I feel like there's a you know, a lot of side characters for the OVAs that uh-huh. don't exist. Okay. Otherwise. But yeah. Uh you know, and of course, Julia makes it eventually to that list of dead lovers. Because <laughs> well, of course she does. Yeah. She has to cry his bloody tear. Shall we get to near the ending, or is there any other cameos or shout outs? Oh, actually, I. Maybe not a cameo. What kind of a cameo? We get another magical boy transformation when we go to, what is it, Kra- Krauser's castle? Is it Krauser, or is it. I can't remember his name. Uh, I think it yeah. is Krauser's Castle. Yeah, it was Krauser's Castle. Who was the apparently the villain in the second OVA, right? Yeah, but uh, in the first one. First? I believe he's the first so Geese is the second OVA? The second. Okay. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> it, the, the, the villains for the OVAs were Krauser and, and Geese. Um, and they're and in they the games. Were, I'm pretty sure that they're also uh, in, the, in the games as well. Like Geese the, for sure is. Yeah, they're the bad guys. Yeah. But that, that dude, Baron Von Blood. Yeah, it wasn't just like blood? Yeah, like Baron Blood. Blood hole or Blood sign or something like that. Who is, what is he, like a French matador? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. He's a German matador. German matador, okay. Oh, yeah. He has a great transformation sequence. Yeah, he sure does. He just pulls off a cape and boom, a, a bunch of armor. <laughs> that was and a sword. Where was he hiding that, that saber? I have no idea. Yeah. That's why it's a magic trick. Yep. <laughs> well, Maya also gets a pretty... Maya gets a pretty good transformation, too. She's probably... She actually loses all of her clothes. That's true. And Twi- then new well, ones uh, appear. appear around her. Do you think she summoned them from her ninja scrolls? <laughs> I don't think... I think they just wanted to get her naked. <laughs> Twice in this movie. Twice, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she has a shower scene, too, because of course she does. Because it's 90s anime. Yeah, every 90s, anime. Every 90s mm-hmm. anime has an OVA movie, has a shower, has a shower scene. scene. I'm sure it does. Just about. Let's yeah. see which other ones we end up watching for this podcast and be like, shower scene. Shower 
<laughs> yeah, we should have a running tally. I feel like the uh, the shower scene for for Mai was almost entirely a callback or like a call out to the shower scene from the Street Fighter motion picture. I thought the Street Fighter one came later. Well, the the scene for Chun Li and the scene for Mai are almost verbatim. Yeah, but I, oh, no, I mean it could have happened later, but I feel like they're almost entirely the same. Movie. I could be wrong. They could both like Street Fighter. The animated movie might have been ninety two. I thought for some, it might have been brought over in ninety six. That's when I might be confusing. Oh man! Yeah, I, they both came. Both of these came out when I was in like junior yeah. high. So yep, they're roughly around the same time. But, well, yeah. eventually Lao Korn ends up getting almost all the armor pieces, along with the hidden final armor piece that that Sulia manages to unearth thanks to her magical pendant that she's been having since the beginning of the series of the movie. Yeah. They didn't know where the last piece they they're going all over this map trying to find them mm-hmm. and then realizing the way people have taken these armor pieces off to their homelands or they got, you know, uh, attacked or whatever. It's funny too. And- Lyle Korn keeps finding them because our heroes are garbage. While they're all uh, globe charting, everyone but Joe gets into a fight. Like Terry gets into a fight and gets well, beat Joe up pretty bad. Fight yeah, he had his fight at the beginning. <laughs> Andy gets two <laughs> fights. Well, mm-hmm. Where he also gets his ass kicked. So. Yeah, Mai gets kind of two fights as well. Kind of. And well, like a fight and a half. Yeah, a fight and a half. I'll, I'll yeah. give you that one. It's funny because they they definitely sped her up when she was doing her fight with the chick. Yeah. But, man, she was slow as ass against due to the mask. Yeah. She was so slow <clears throat> against that peacock. But at <laughs> least Andy round two. Um, oh, he was not about that. He was super, in his in his black ninja outfit. Was like, was, just like, was that no, player two? Player, player two player. color scheme? Player two. <laughs> uh-huh. player two Andy. Player two Andy came out and was like, No. Not in my house. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> White knight powers. <laughs> Yeah, he, he definitely skilled up. Yeah. And then was like, let's leave let's leave Terry and Joe drunk and drunk <laughs> on the floor. We'll go after Mai. Sulia in a little bit, Mai. Hold oh, on. No, but first, makeouts. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it is a decently composed movie, but it is sort of preposterous. Yeah, the, the ending fight definitely left me perplexed i think is a good word i was like what yeah they kind of try to set it up they're like oh it took all these it took these like five different generals or four different generals yeah. to stop uh the armor when it was first unearthed for godness mm-hmm. and so they're they're sort of like oh it'll take you know the power of terry and andy and my and joe to to stop the this armor but really it just takes terry bogart like being lonely yes it's like it's like (laughs) fist of the north star where sadness is what gives you the power to overcome all your Uh (laughs) adversity so you have to know grief to really become powerful yeah you have to be be really good at wearing like tree bark (laughs) and uh pieces of granite because because laucorn gets all the armor pieces and I, he doesn't really make short work of Terry because he's still alive and fighting, yeah. but he sort of, he sort he of, become yeah, a god. he does become a god, he become a god. <laughs> and he sort of just, you know, he's not even trying uh, when it comes to taking any of their attacks. It isn't until with the, due to the magic oh, of twin powers that Sulia decides to sacrifice herself and injure herself on her arm first and then stab her breast? Yes. Yeah, and she just makes a big show of it. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm going to fulfill these prophecies for Terry. <laughs> he just, thinks everybody he cares about is going to die? Well, I not have me. responsibility for... Just kidding. Yeah. Funny enough, too, when I was trying to look for this, to look for, you know, like, Fatal Fury clips on YouTube... Um, the scene where Terry is holding Sulia is the image preview for the oh, Fatal great. Fury movie oh. on YouTube. Spoiler. Fantastic. That's great. <laughs> so if you're listening to this before watching it, uh, well, now you know. That's why we talk about spoilers here. But really, like, what scene would be the best preview image for this? I sort of feel like maybe something in Duck King's, like, yeah. disco. Yeah. I would say probably when Mai is doing her sexy times dance. <laughs> Uh-huh. Or even I love, I love that their master is totally 
uh, Hopper at, at Duck King's new club. And I love how sad Duck King gets at the end of it. He's so mad that his club gets destroyed. It does. He's like, oh man, you busted up my new club. I'll get you. <laughs> So good. Billy Kane's like, I'm just gonna fucking leave. <laughs> He's like, some shit went down. I, this is not my brawl. Yeah, and then he goes, he goes back to Geese. And yeah, and Geese is like, oh, I'm gonna go find Terry Bogard. Terry Bogard. Oh god. You have to have that dramatic pause in there for the dub. So dramatic. <laughs> Every time. So what happens to Laucorn after he gets, after he feels twin powers? Huh. He gets uh, Viserys. <laughs> well, not yet. <laughs> he becomes a god. And then Terry, he, and then he gets Terry defeats him with a, what is it, a burn knuckle? Burn knuckle to the heart where Celia stabbed herself knuckle. and yeah. the armor, like, splatters? Like, it becomes liquefied. For yeah, well, and then this was just like, yeah, it's totally a Terminator 2 thing. Yeah. Because it becomes liquid and then forms up again around the statue, which melts. Since it's been forever since like, I saw into... it, I thought like, oh, it's done. Yay, Laocorn defeated. Oh. Oops. Oh, we are Lord of the Rings ending this. Okay, no, he was just the sub boss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now we meet the actual boss. You thought you were playing against this guy, he but lo and behold, it. here is Ganondorf. Yeah. yeah. Gardenmusendorf. Bossimus. Bossimus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, what, what kind of a name is Gardenmus anyway? Uh-huh. Japan. <laughs> like, that's not even a joke. Some of the names for It's just like, ah, we did a bunch of research on like ancient Western history and this this name doesn't sound impressive enough, so we're just gonna put God at the front of it. <laughs> that yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> like that is that is an occasional thing that really happens with Japan. I gotta give credit to Andy for this for that scene. Um before the final showdown. Andy's like, Joe, take my I'll hold him off. Or take my and Terry, I'll hold him off. So props to Joe, who sadly is not the main character, even <laughs> though he thinks he is. But <laughs> well, he starts out the main character. It's like they're all going to watch him fight, and he's like, "Yeah, look Sorry, at not me." Sorry, Joe. Andy. Oh, Andy <laughs> is Andy's perpetual younger brother. Yeah, Andy's yeah. Andy is Luigi. He he. But well, and apparently, like up. he he's not even included in the later game series. So I guess he, this was his moment to shine. He's in a games. lot of King of Fighters games. He's not in all of them. <laughs> there are I think some he's he not. Appear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Aww. he's in most of them. He's in most of them. He's in the newest one. Have like he's a, in most. A, a trio of people in mm-hmm. those games, and typically that that group of people is uh, Terry, Mai, and Joe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Andy's like a sometimes character, or like a like you'll know, get like a special with uh, Mai, and Terry will show up, or Andy will show up, or like you'll get a special with and Andy. Every now and then, Andy's yeah. on a different team. Like yeah, he gets like on the blonde dude's team. Or something. <laughs> Seriously, if, if they have, like, a, a more, like, women-themed aspect to the game, like, Mai will show up on that team, and then it'll be Terry, Andy, and Joe. Mm-hmm. But uh, the typical, like, King of Fighters, for King of Fighters, the typical trio for their for their uh, combos are <laughs> are not Mai's boyfriend. Yeah. And Joe. <laughs> Mai and Joe. <laughs> and also not Mai's boyfriend. Yeah. Which was always kind of frustrating for me. So Terry goes blue Super Saiyan. <laughs> and yeah. and then um he cries tears of blood. Apparently he flies because Sure. Yeah, why not? I mean he, he kinda does some good like Bucky Barnes on a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> he gets it's, a he gets a couple motorcycles. He gets a really he gets a lot of good moments. And, and you know, through and magically the, can carry women while jumping. Through the power of sadness, he overcomes Godimus armor yeah. with blue, like giant blue fire. Oh, I forgot. We we get the touching end of of Jamin before this no. fight. Uh, uh, yeah, well, whatever. Go watch. Forgot about that. Go watch the movie. Jamin, how could you? <laughs> we Jamin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hope you like Jamin, too. I did like Jamin, so why'd you have to die? <laughs> uh, no one in that group was going to stay alive. No, no yeah. one was. Well, yeah, I figured once they had that moment where they were like, I don't really know if I'm on board with all this. But... <laughs> well, we can't turn back now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Actual, actual problems. <laughs> Henchman world problems. <laughs> 
Whoops, sorry there folks, forgot to make mention of the bonus features of the Viz release of Fatal Fury the Motion Picture. That's our bad. Had a little too much fun and maybe a little too much wine. Anyway, there's not a lot of bonus features on the Viz release for this. All we saw were some character bios and some trailers. We watched the trailers for the um, English version and the Japanese version. I'm surprised they actually made a trailer for the English version, so... Yep, not much there unless you want to know more about Fatal Fury characters, and you could technically do that on Wikipedia. And with that, back to the episode. <laughs> so we're going to save the best for last. Um, so, Diana, you'll go last. Kate, what did you think of Fatal Fury the movie? I, I think of all the things we've watched so far, uh, it was probably the best. <laughs> like, it's it actually impressed me in that, like, the, the plot actually gets a little bit complicated has a lot of characters and yet they're each one has um their own moments and they're unique enough that they're fairly memorable Mm -hmm. like even the henchmen even the people that you don't see that often even the people who don't even really play a part in advancing the plot like kim (laughs) 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 or duck king (laughs) like they're still like interesting characters and i guess it helps that they're all coming from a fighting game where they have like full-fledged character designs and backstories you know Mm -hmm. like each one is sort of meant to be a main character in the fighting game so that that helps but at least uh most of them got a moment to shine in the movie so uh and it tells a pretty complicated story and it does it and it still manages to be pretty entertaining even though it still is victim to a lot of 80s-ness yeah and 90s-ness yeah yeah the the design aspect is so 90s for this thing but it's like early 90s it's not even good 90s (laughs) I really liked it, too. I remember watching it um, during the sci-fi days when they had that. It actually caused me to purchase what I thought was the sequel movie. Uh-huh. No, it was the Fatal Fury 2 OVA, the second OVA instead. So it happens so it before happens this? happens before this, and I was yeah, super confused yeah. when I watched it. Yeah, I guess I at like, least wait, what considering did, this, this huh? comes after several other uh, videos, like, it, you know, and I've never even played the video game, so I don't know who any of these characters are. Like, it, it still manages to be entertaining, and you, it's still easy to understand who these characters are. Very much so. I mean, it helps that they're really archetypal. This but also might you be, can understand them easily. This also might be... Actually, no. This probably is the only one that we have watched so far that everyone has, in here has seen the dub for it. <laughs> yeah. Like, with Green Legend Ron, I think I was... Like, Eve and I only watched a dub... And I watched. Well, I was surprised that like everyone was like, "No, we gotta watch the dub." And like, <laughs> no, 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 not everyone, just mostly me. Just, <laughs> like, and I was, was very vocal about it. I was very, very much like, "Oh no, if we're it's like it's like with Ninja Scroll. Like I enjoy Ninja Scroll in Japanese, perfectly fine, but that dub is like that's memories. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is that is beautiful, like water misty water colored memories for me." <laughs> yeah. And this this was really good. I I really liked the character designs as well, except maybe um yeah, I'm going to get so much shit for this. I felt like I like other uh iterations in the games for my over this over the anime version of my, but you know, it's just it's just me. Well, she's very pink in this one. And her her costume is typically red. Yeah. It might that might be it. It might be like if the if the discotheque version of this film might have a better remaster than the Viz version, because mm-hmm. now discotheque owns a license for this. They have the OVA as a two pack and the movie as a separate thing. So you can purchase all of it now on new DVDs and Blu-rays. Mm. But yeah, I highly enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun and brought back a lot of memories. Ed. Yeah. I mean, if we were going around the, is this worth watching? I think it's worth watching just that it's a coherent story. Mm hmm. Um, even if you're not, you know, familiar with the, uh, the fighting game, uh, it's still a story you can enjoy. I want to buy a hat with a metal plate. <laughs> <laughs> I want one. It's like a Naruto hat. You and me and everybody else. Everybody else wants one. Proto Naruto hat. Yeah. Oh, man. Lit up to it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's worth watching for anybody who enjoys i mean it's not revolutionary by any means but they do a good job of taking a franchise that has like the characters from it and not a a deep story for fighting games not a deep story adding a story 
also not trying to do too much, which yeah. uh, is another problem that fighting game adaptations run into. We got to throw everybody right. in there. Everybody. So they struck the right balance with that. So, mm-hmm. you know, overall, I, I agree with Kate that this is probably the best work out of the ones we've watched. I'm so sure if, you, if you're if you a King of Fighters or Fatal Fury player that dislikes Terry, Andy, Joe, and Mai, then maybe you'll have some <laughs> right. qualms with this. Maybe you are playing the wrong game. <laughs> yes, in that case, you sure you're playing the wrong game. Well, yeah. you, could be, you could be a Kim fan and be like, they I didn't mean, do red by him at all. But yeah. <laughs> Diana, why should everyone watch Fatal Fury, the movie. <laughs> well, I mean, besides, I said so. Like, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where, for me, like, even, even when I was younger, it was, like, it is, to this day, still a, a pretty beautiful animation. Mm-hmm. Um, Except for those two fights, but so, though they're though that's that's like three minutes out of a hundred and thirty five yeah. minutes. So yeah, don't worry, a, guys. It's a, decent, a decent length of, of time too. Like it's a pretty it's a pretty well put together movie. Um, it has really nice designs, like you guys said. The, the plot and the story are pretty easy to follow, and you really don't need to know anything about these characters because they mm-hmm. kind of give you a, a basic idea of of not just who they are, but their dynamics with each other. Mm-hmm. And I'm a really big fan, personally, of, of shows where um, where not family has a family unit and where you have people who are doing the right thing for the sake of doing the right thing. Like, that's why I connect to JoJo so hard, I think, it's because I feel like this is a case where, you know, people that may not necessarily be related to you are doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And especially with part three globe charting adventure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's like a very, very, very less good condensed version of that. <laughs> um except against Pillarman. Uh I like that. It's they, true, you're fighting Pillarman in yeah. this. <laughs> I like that you And women going Pillar around, women. like doing the different things and seeing all these other characters that they're not completely like you you don't have to again, you don't have to rely on these on these, uh, you know, other cameos and everything, but it's fun. So it, it's something that is enjoyable for just the casual watcher, but it's also something that if you are a fan of King of Fires, you are a fan of Fatal Fury, you're going to enjoy it that much more. Even SNK just in general. Like, there's a lot of little homages and little throwbacks to SNK stuff, or like mm-hmm. Neo Geo and... You yeah, know. Neo Geo Land, the truck yeah, has... The SNK truck. Yeah, the, the truck that Terry almost uh, gets crushed by on his motorcycle is an SNK truck. Yeah. So things like that, I I also think are amusing to me personally, like as a fan of anime and as a fan of of movies and cinema in mm-hmm. general. Like I think that's one of the other reasons why I like uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe so much is you get a lot of cute little Easter eggs like that. Yeah, I'm. Them. Since we're not super deep into the SNK fighting game fandom, I'm wondering what other little Easter eggs we might have missed. You know. Oh, mostly the people that like show up, like the girls that show up around. Um, Duck King. Uh, Master Jubei. Oh. And you know, you get like a like. There's one girl that definitely looks like uh, was it Tam Tam. Uh, from Samurai Spirits. Hmm. Huh. She's with the. She looks like Lum. Oh, okay. The one looks like Lum from Samurai Spirits. And uh, you know, there's a lot of like just random stuff. Were there any art of fighting characters in there? I, I, didn't I don't I didn't recall. I didn't notice any, no. Those it would have surprised me if that dude from the beginning with the, with the really bad Zangief hair might have been from Art of Fighting. <laughs> but Art of Fighting is, I mean, that's not... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, now. Did you play Art of Fighting? Well, no, but the characters well, that they no, have in it. <laughs> Actually, no, I did play the first one. But, oh, but some of the better king, like some of the more humorous King of Fighters characters, are also from Artifact. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's, there's well, the yeah. ones that, that are definitely joke characters. <laughs> <laughs> and by that, I mean they're the ones that Dan is a riff on. All right. Well, I think that'll that'll put a bow on the Fatal Fury movie talk. I think there's I a. I recommend an A plus. Would watch. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> there is a strong possibility down the road we are going to look into these OVAs as well. Oh, so God. you can listen to these out of order. Hooray. Sorry. Hooray. It'll be fine. 
What's nice about what we said about this motion picture thing is you can actually watch it without having watched any of the OVAs and still have it make, I want to say, 95% complete sense. Mm -hmm. It's good. Particularly good. in English. <laughs> the dub is excellent. I'm hoping that Discotech kept the same dub. I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah, so. yeah. Especially not with that great script. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Why don't we just go around the room and say where people can find us? Kate, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Tycho Chan. I'm going to AX most likely. I mean, we'll we'll see how things shake out, but I'm probably going to be there. Yay. You can find me at Itchnob on Twitter as well. Um, yes to Anime Expo. Unfortunately, I'm bombing out of Fanime this year. First time in like six, seven years. So we'll see when return happens, but uh just wasn't in the cards this year. Ed. Yes, you can still find me at the very long Twitter handle, Ethan Okuinashi. I need to find the the bit in Fist of the North Star where they say it, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep that wave file and just add it in after it's, you say it, your Twitter. It's it's Rao's death, so it's the, the one of the most famous parts. Sweet, so. I'll go look that up since it's on Hulu. By so. the time you find it, I'll have changed my Twitter. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Uh, find Ed in the background of the original Street Fighter. That's right. Street Fighter 2. Here in the background. <laughs> I also am most likely going to Anime Expo, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully work will allow you to. Yes, exactly. Diana. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Binksy, B-I-N-K-X-Y. You can see what I'm currently working on for uh, World Cosplay Summit with my partner Allie at Facebook.com slash Life Cry Cosplay, which is our team name for the upcoming finals that are going to be taking place at Anime Next in uh, New Jersey. Woo! Um, Woo! And then you can follow myself and my usual partner in crime, Mike, at uh, facebook.com slash Vegeta Balls Cosplay, where we typically scream a lot about things like Fatal Fantasy. <laughs> 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 yes. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure if we had Mike on this, he would have a lot of things to say about Fatal Fury. Mostly Feel the Storm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we if, if we do the OVAs, we have to get him on. Oh, no, we don't have for him i don't know man okay like, well I, then I, maybe I, maybe a different title then we have plenty of titles but uh yeah so you can see me you can see me at all these places i will um the next convention i'm at is uh like i said anime next out in um new Atlantic jersey City in new jersey and then uh after that i'll be at anime expo for sure this year yeah apparently um our other two hosts, uh, Eve at Twitter at Eve, I believe it's Eve underscore IL, or is it Eve IL? Okay, Eve, Eve underscore, underscore IL. And Sam, um, S5, and you spell S, so N5, <laughs> E-S-S-F-I-V-E. Uh, Eve told us about a vintage, anime a vintage anime cosplay gathering over at AX, so I might go check that out and see if we can uh, interview the gathering hosts about it. So, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. It's got a few more weeks leading up to that, and we'll see what happens when that time comes. But in terms of other business, Vintage Anime Club podcast is on Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. We're also on iTunes, Stitcher, Blueberry, Google Play Music. And if there are any other places that you want to find us, let us know. We're also at social media sites. You can find us on Vintage Anime Club on Facebook, Vintage Anime Pod on Twitter, and our email is vintageanimeclub at gmail.com. So thank you guys for being on for this episode. Thank you everyone out there for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review on any of those podcast aggregate sites. Don't even bother reviewing the actual episode. Just tell us what your favorite uh, old school animes are. Let us know about that. Or if you happen to have felt the storm. <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> I am become a god! I love course! <laughs> Alright, everyone, glasses up! Kampai! This episode was brought to you by 
Pietro Sangiovese di Toscana Italian Red Wine 2013. Mm, Told her. Produced by the principal Tuscany grapes, this wine has an intense ruby red color, dense and delicate scent, dry and fruity taste. It is a very pleasant all-occasion wine, but it is especially suitable to drink with hors d'oeuvres, pasta, and red meats. Serve at room temperature. I guess it's also really appropriate to serve with anime talking. (laughs) (laughs) It's delicious, like the tears. (laughs) And we liked it so much that we polished it off. So here is our second wine of the evening. This is uh, Onyx Moon, Californian red wine. This juice, oh, this juicy, super dense wine is inspired by the onyx blackness of a new moon, a lunar phase occurring when the sun, earth, and the moon are all aligned. Loaded with intense flavors of blackberries, black cherry, and dark chocolate, onyx moon is the perfect wine to enjoy with roasted meats, barbecued anything, chocolates, or just by itself. It's very sweet, too. Yeah. I'd also say it goes well with anime. When uh, looking at the label, I thought it said Moon X. Because <laughs> I was like, Yeah, what? actually, if you look at the label, it says Moon X, but apparently it's actually uh, Onyx called Moon. Onyx Moon. All right. Sure. <laughs> Next time we got Samurai X, so enjoy. <laughs> 